God's peace be with you. We will search Ayah 18, 60 till 82, which speaks about Moses' journey with a mysterious man. We will see who is he, what Moses learned from him. Look Ayah 8, 28, 14, which says when Moses reached the, his adulthood, God brought him wisdom and knowledge. He was about 40 years old of age. This means he took this wisdom before becoming a messenger because when he became a messenger of God, he was 80 years old as mentioned in Bible Exodus 7.7 .7. and according to Quran Ayah 28.27 says he stayed 10 pilgrim years in Midian after he became messenger when he met God in light. This means he went this journey with the mysterious man in adulthood, aged between 33 and 40, when he stayed with the pharaohs. And in Ayah 1860, Moses says he will keep traveling until he reaches the junction of the two seas, or still continue the journey until he finds what he is looking for. If we search the map, he was in Egypt. <laughs> So the junction of the two seas must be in India, the Great Delta River in India, the Pami and Magra River is the obvious place because it's the area Buddha and Mahavira lived and about the fish which Moses and his helper took with them as they traveled this great distance. When they were exhausted, they wanted to eat the fish which they carried with them. As we know, the fish gets rotten in a matter of days. They must have traveled at least a month. We assume that the fish is the lungfish that thrives in the Nile River Delta. And its name is marbled lungfish. When it gets drought, it stays in the soil without water, in a cocoon, sealed by itself for four to five years. When it hears or senses of water, it walks to the nearest river delta as happened to Moses this is the miracle of the Quran fish stays fresh in a cocoon for years how Quran mentioned such a fish yet modern time knowledge have little information about this kind of a creature Moses wanted to get to the Delta River because Mahavira and Buddha lived there in the Bihar area the lungfish can hear outside the water unlike ordinary fish that hears only under the water they have ears inside their body, called otolith. The vibration of sound waves in the water easily passes through their bodies to hear, but outside the water the sound waves are reflected, and the ordinary fish doesn't hear sounds unlike the lungfish. It has highly developed ear. It can hear greatly outside the water and inside the water. Ordinary fish cannot breathe outside the water because it has gills, but the lungfish has lungs and gills. It hears outside the water and inside the water. So when they arrive at the North India River Delta, the fish recognize the sounds and swamps and swap, walk to the river, then swim to the sea from its cocoon. Notice that the lungfish can survive in salt water and fresh water. Now, what about the date Moses was 1450 BC and Mahavira and Buddha, they think it's around 600 BC. But Chinese Buddhists say Buddha was 1100 BC. Notice the Hindu sacred text, texts, the Vedas are 1500 BC, the same Moses' time. And the Vedas mention about Buddha and in Buddhist texts, they tell Mahavira was at Buddha's time. Another clue is there was a war in Buddha's time. They tie it to Ashoka Gupta dynasty, 300 BC. Because of this, they claim Buddha is 500 BC, 1500 BC. The same time of the war of the 10 Aryan kings of North India, which is mentioned also in Vedic texts. And another proof is in the Quran that says there was a king taking ships by force. It's all tied together. And now what about the language Moses spoke with this man, which we say he's Mahavir. Notice that North India are Aryan's race and the Vedas are written in Sankrist, which is Aryan subgroup language. 
and the North India Ten Kings Wars are Aryan kings. So, Sanskrit language is derived from Akkadian language. Egyptian lords understood Akkadian language. And South Indians are dark skin. And the North Indians are white skin color. So, if North Indians were Aryans, and Bihar city is in the north, India Buddha, and Mahavira must uh, have been Aryan tribes. God says in Quran, he taught special knowledge from himself. We know that Abraham is the father of the prophets. Remember in the Bible, Old Testament, Moses wrote about Job. And in Quran 6.84, Job is from Abraham's seed. When Job's sons were killed by God, he brought them back. Look, Ayah 21.84. But it doesn't say, I resurrected them. We brought them. Well, we assume that God, when he killed them, he directly incarnated them in heaven. So Job might have said, God, keep them in heaven. So God gave Job like them in Ayah written 21.84. Says, we gave him the same. We understand copy of Job's son's souls incarnated as Mahavira. Says he is the last incarnation, the last Tirankar of the gift of God to Job. If Job is from Abraham's seed, then so it means Mahavir and Buddha are from Abraham's descendant. And notice in Bible Job 1 says Job is from Uz. Uz, we assume, is Uzbekistan. So it's near India to the north. And Mahavira is the founder of Jainism religion. In the Jaina texts, it's written that when Mahavir obtained Nirvana, which means enlightened or omniscience, after two years, he met a man wanted to be his disciple and learn from him. Mahavira's companion's name was Maskarin. See how close to Moses' name. And it's written also in Jainism texts that Mascarin was born in slavery and also in a basket of reeds. Moses was born in, into slavery and thrown to the Nile in reed basket. In Jaina text mentions Mascarin stayed with Mahavir for six years after they disagreed and separated. Well then the man Moses met is none other than Mahavir, founder of the Jaina religion. So what Moses learned from Mahavir, Jain, is well known as the most peaceful religion in the world and he was ascetic and naked when he met Moses as mentioned in Jaina text he meditated a lot Moses must have learned the secret meditation from Mahavir Mahavir knew destinies informed by God's meditation we think is the same as prayer and the secret prayers that Quran mentioned says it's lost in Ayah 1959 that can see visions of the future events and the secret prayer system written clearly in the Quran which by God's will we will speak about it in another video and don't forget their goal was to obtain Nirvana and after death para Nirvana Nirvana means enlightened they knew the secret meditation which opens the third eye inside our brain and the last goal pari nirvana which means nirvana after death we explained that after achieving nirvana you use your knowledge for peace and you are incarnated directly after death in heaven you have no judgment directly to heaven as written in ayah 16.32 this is the greatest goal that Mahavir Moses Buddha wanted to achieve. Thanks God for his knowledge.